in the beginning, God had a story to tell, the greatest story ever told, the story of creation. God began his story with four simple words, let there be light. And everything God created was a character in the story, birds and bugs, land and lizards, fish and flowers, and the moon. Birth and life, death and decay, destruction and new growth, all these are part of the story. And for centuries, this story grew in the telling. Something about their awareness allowed humans to change the course of the story to suit their own needs, or at least the things they thought they needed. Humanity invented power, and humans abused the power. Abused it until greed and war and poverty and slavery began to mess up God's story of creation. But God did not give up on us. We were still characters in God's story. God decided to do something new. And to tell this part of the story, God asked a few unlikely people for help. My name is Mary and I'm 13 years old. I'm from a small town in a small country in a big empire, the Roman Empire. It seems like all I ever do is haul water for my mother and help look after my brothers and sisters. I'm supposed to be married soon, but I don't think my life will change, even then. One fateful day, God's messenger came to Mary. Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. The Lord is with you. Rejoice. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of our ancestor David, and his kingdom will know no end. An actual live angel speaking to me? I can't believe it. I'm going to be a mother. How will I do it? I know nothing about parenting. Maybe my fiancé Joseph will give me a hand. I sure do hope he knows something about this. But wait, how will this happen? I'm not married yet. The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The one who will be born in you will be holy. He will be called God's Son, long-awaited Messiah. Do not be afraid, Mary, for I will be here, and for the Lord will be with you. Will you join in God's story? Yes, let it be with me, just as you have said. Okay, but we might need to lose the nose ring. <laughs> Mary couldn't contain her excitement. She raced off to visit her cousin Elizabeth to share her news. My name is Elizabeth. I'm Mary's cousin, and I can't believe that we're having a baby at the same time. I thought I was too old to have children, and Mary is so young. But I can't wait for both of them to grow up together and so close to family. There was one person in Mary's life who was not excited. Her fiance, Joseph, couldn't understand what had happened. What miracle of shining possibility his partner had just openly welcomed. My name is Joseph. I'm the opposite of thrilled to be the father of this baby. Don't get me wrong, it really is a blessing to be chosen. But I'm not prepared. I'm freaking out, man. How am I going to learn how to be a father? What am I going to do? How am I going to learn how to be a dad? A dad. A dad. Don't be afraid to become Mary's husband and to take care of Jesus. The decision God has asked her to make will bring God to us in a new way. Will you join Mary and God in telling the story? I am ashamed that I didn't trust and believe what she said the first time. If Mary is truly blessed by God, who am I to say no? Yes, of course I will, with God's help. Later that year, the Roman Emperor wanted to count all the people in his empire as a way to ensure his power over them. Everyone had to go to their hometowns to be counted, and Mary, even though she was almost two, went with Joseph all the way to Bethlehem, another small town in a small country. Um, but the town was so crowded they couldn't find a place to stay. They searched and searched for days while they lived on the street without a roof over their heads. 
Then Mary labor started, and Joseph found a place for her in an innkeeper's stable where it was warm and dry. There were many animals that filled the stable with warmth. Mary delivered her child in this humble setting, in a barn filled with animals, if you can imagine that, and he used the manger for a crib, so lowly, so off the radar. That's why the powerful people in the world like me miss the child's birth. No herald proclaimed the news. No messenger was sent from the king. The only thing different about this night was the very bright star in the eastern sky. Congratulations. This is a special birth. God is especially concerned for those who are poor and cast out by society. This includes shepherds who live outside in the cold and bad weather, taking care of their flocks. The shepherd looked up in the sky, which was filled with a very bright star, and all my angel friends were singing. Do not be afraid. I bring you word of the greatest joy. Jesus the Savior is born today. The child may not be whom you expect, but he is the person who will help you make peace with one another and with all of creation. Hurry now. You will find the baby and his mother lying in a manger. Hurry, go see for yourselves. I am a shepherd. My job is to stay with my sheep and not leave them because a wolf or thief might take the sheep. But that star, that star shone so brightly that the whole sky was lit. I drew us to a barn, and there, in the animal's manger, we found a tiny little baby sleeping in the manger. I've never felt such peace and love before. We shepherds were not the only visitors who followed the star to where the baby lay. Three people who looked like kings from a faraway land came bringing gifts for the baby Jesus. We have followed a bright star. The star led us to this barn, a stable filled with animals, two people, and a beautiful baby, and several shepherds who also followed the star are in pain to worship this wonderful baby. We come bearing gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. God's story now had a new character. The word of God became human and bone in humility, whose birth was witnessed by outcasts and immigrants and ignored by the powerful. Jesus grew up to be someone who could have wielded huge power, but chose instead to keep forever the humility of his Bethlehem birth. Jesus could have asserted dominance, but he chose instead to serve. Jesus chose generosity over greed, peace over war, sharing over poverty, freedom over slavery. Jesus exposed the lies society told, and so the powerful did not ignore Jesus for long. Jesus died a criminal's death because he wanted us to be the heroes of the story. And he rose again, to help us become so. In the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus sends, Jesus sends God's beloved children. But wait, where are God's beloved children? Do you want to be part of the story that God is telling? I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. in. Go, fill the world with God's peace and justice and grace and love. Go, be part of God's story. Go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ.
Christ is born. Those shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born down in a lonely manger the humble christ was born and god sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ Christ